I'm Matt. I'm Carrie. We are the Stagmer Brothers of Baltimore Knife and Sword. We're going to be building some of your favorite weapons, and some weapons that you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms, Reforged. So if you've been watching our League of Legends builds before and we've talked about playing, you'll know that I mostly play ARAMs. When you're playing ARAMs, that one champ you don't want to see on the other team, especially from a competent player, is Master Yi. To create Master Yi's blade, I'll be using three and a half inches of 4140 stock. I'll be knocking this down, getting it down to a bar form using the Nasel power hammer. It'll take me about a half an hour to get it down to a bar, and then we'll work from there. Now that Kerry's done a lot of the brute forging and really broken down this round stock into a nice long bar, Billy is going to take over from here and start forging the blade. He's going to continue drawing it out. He's going to work on both the flat and on the sides to make sure everything stays nice and true as he draws it out. Here you can clearly see where Ilya is spraying water onto the blade as he's working and the scale is popping from the surface. The reason we want that scale to pop off is it can leave really deep pits in the metal. We have a really limited amount of material to work from this time. We've got to make a pretty large blade so we can't afford any loss. See now, Ilya is turning that symmetrical point that he forged in into the more Tonto, Katana like point that we're used to seeing in the game art. You've seen Ilya do very similar work on the Kill Bill Katana episode. Ilya has quickly become one of the major masters in this country at forging super large blades. Not too many people even take those commissions. Many customers come asking all different sword makers if they'll make super huge large blades like you guys request. Ilya has now forged more than probably any of them in this country, maybe worldwide. He's quickly become a master and it's fun to watch him work. At this point Ilya is removing the handle section so that he can define the tang. Doesn't need that handle on there for leverage anymore now that the blade's drawn out so long. He's flipped it over, he's using a hot cut tool underneath the power hammer. He's just gonna remove that material, and allow him to forge that section. Now that the power hammer work is done on this blade, Kaylee's gonna move to the anvil and start forging in the bevels. You can see as he works to get these really steep bevels, he's working on the very edge of the anvil. This is so that when he holds that blade at an angle and strikes it matching that angle, he doesn't hit the face of the anvil, dinging it or possibly chipping the anvil. To give you guys a sense of time, Ilya's been hand beveling now for about an hour. He's now at the point where he's joining the tip bevel into the shoulder bevel. He's got about a six inch section to go. This is a long process, takes about 20 heats to get the bevel forged in on a big blade like this. So he's just gonna stay at it, and then I'll be ready to do the grinding. Now that the forging is done, it's time to start the grinding. I have a few things I gotta work out before I start. This is a hybrid between a Chinese ring sword, which has nine rings down the back of the blade. This only has two, and a Japanese katana. The Chinese ring swords are very flimsy and very light, used in traditional forms. Japanese katana is very thick and has very prominent edges. So I have to do a blend of the both. I'm gonna start by profiling just slightly and then start on those heavy bevels. Today I've been working on the League of Legends ring sword and I'm doing the rings that are going to hang from the sword. We're going to do them out of bronze and we decided to do them as the um, stylized snake that's eating its tail. Now I'm in the process of carving the scales on it and once the scales are carved on it, we'll cast it in bronze and then finish it tomorrow and any place where I've lost the scales, I'll be able to put them back on with a chasing tool. We'll be doing these castings with lost wax. First we take the waxes and sprue them into a tree, then they're set into a flask, and plaster is poured around them. It's a special plaster called investment. It'll go into the kiln, be slowly ramped up to 1,350, lowered to 1,000. 
It'll be placed into the casting machine. And then I'm gonna bring in molten 2100 degree bronze and pour it into the vacuum machine. After it reaches 900 degrees, we'll take it to the water. It'll steam off the investment and show us our bronze. The last step before heat treating the blade is to get those holes located and drilled in where our rings will go afterwards. Now that we got our bleed ready for heat treating, it's time to move on to the guard portion. Just like in some previous League of Legends builds, the splash art doesn't always match with the in-game art, so I've had to do a little figuring out, see where I want to go with this guard. This is the main splash art for Master Yi for his basic standard skin, and this is what we've based our design off so far. Unfortunately, all the pictures I can find of it have that guard and the blade off angle. So what I had to do was kind of zoom in here, take a good look at everything, and I kind of just freehand drew what I thought the guard would look like. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mirror it over from the center point here. Just gotta fill in a few lines. So the blade will come out of this section. Probably gonna set a stone or something like that in the middle. Cut some overlays to make those borders rise out. And be good to go. So we have six different pieces that make up this guard. We got our central wings, we have the coin block, and then the outer pieces which are gonna make it look like a nice rise border. What I have to do now is I gotta take both of these coin block pieces, and instead of them being nice and flat, we want them to angle towards the blade so they're thicker at the handle and thinner at the blade. He treat Master Yi's sword, his Dadao. This blade is made out of 4140 steel. It's an excellent steel for jackhammer bits, hammer dies, and other impact tools. 4140 has approximately 0.4% carbon, means I don't have to watch my temperatures as carefully as some other higher carbon steels. But it has tons of manganese and tons of chrome in it. This means if I would try to hamon this blade, it would not show any hamon because it's a deep hardening steel and the quench goes all the way under the clay to the spine. Billy now goes into our long furnace, brings this piece up to critical temperature to where it's non-magnetic, brings it out, and takes it to the quench. So, I quench Master Yi's Dadao. It is at full hardness now. However, because it's 4140, it doesn't get hard as the high carbon steels. Check this sound out. It doesn't have that glassy sound because it's 4140. It's highest hardness I can get on this blade in an oil quench is about, uh, let's say, 55, 51 Rockwell. The highest hardness I can get out of 1075, 1095 can be up to 60, 61 Rockwell in an oil quench. Master Yi's sword has been in the tank for about an hour already. In the tempering, this is actually the last opportunity to straighten out any warps produced in the quench. So, I'm going to take it out and go to the vise to quickly yank some of them straight. So, Master Yi's sword is basically straight. Any other warping along the edge will be fixed in the grind when it's been made sharp. Now that we have Master Yi's Wushu blade completely heat treated and tempered, I can move on to the polishing. My first goal is to start at the 80 grit and remove all the deep scale, and then I'll go through the grits from there. All right, so I just ran this blade through the grits. 120, 220, I got a little more polishing to do before I move on to the scotch Bright. but I was able to define that Kasaki, which is where the two different bevels come together. I added a small back bevel on the spine. I just think it looks a little more aggressive and I like it. I'm really happy with it so far. Time to get that hilt and the pommel one. The pommel from Master Yi's sword will be constructed from three pieces of black iron pipe and a couple pieces of round bar that will be forged into two arrowhead finials. When forging finials like this, the preform is very important. So I'm going to take a, the piece of this round bar and I'm going to flatten it out. And then I'm going to form two shoulders. 
and then using the edge of the anvil, I'm going to buck that shape to get a shape like this. And then from there, I'll bevel them and draw that point more. And then it'll be get cleaned up to look like that. So one, two, three. So for the pommel on Master Yi, Sam's already forged out a couple of the points that go to the left and right. I'm gonna be basically turning a spike out the top and then we'll probably do some faceting on it to get it to fit. It'll lock down into a pipe section that'll become the main part of the pommel. All of that's gonna get welded solid and that'll hold the whole sword together. For the construction on our pommel, we're gonna use two pieces of pipe. One's gonna get a notch in it, the other a V. They're gonna be put together and welded solid. I start by cutting the two pieces of pipe on the saw, then I move to the sander to sand in the notch in the V shape that will allow these two pieces of pipe to join together. What we have is a cross pipe with a notch in it, and a top pipe with a V in it. It's gonna get welded solid. Then we have these nice arrowheads that Sam forged, and then the lathe turn spike that Carrie did, it'll go in the top. Now that the base of our guard is polished out, it's time to add those borders on. John's gonna use the MIG welder and weld all the way around the perimeter, and then he's gonna move to the sanders and blend that weld off. With time winding down, the pressure's on. No time for us to go one at a time, so while John's fastening the pommel, I blend the welds on the guard. We're gonna put some bright green paint into the background on this piece. But before that, the entire piece has to be brassed because that's gonna be the highlight on the raised sections and all the way around the border. After preheating the guard, Sam takes a solid brass wire wheel and runs it over the surface. The friction from the wire wheel and the preheat on the material lays the brass permanently onto the guard. So for the handle on Master Yi, we've got this small flange that mounts here that goes on top of the guard. I'm gonna be cutting that on the lathe, just a couple of steps in here, and then we'll take it over to the mill and make a larger slot to go over the tank. I use a 3 8 cutter on the Gorton mill to make a slot where I had placed a hole using the lathe. So we have a small area that we've cut, it's about a half inch, these are 12 millimeter stones. I'm gonna be setting sterling silver bezels in place, then we'll drop the stones into them afterwards using a torch low temperature solder, about 500 degrees here, uh, and an acid base flux that's gonna burn that surface nice and clean for us. As soon as I feel like I'm getting the heat, I'm gonna put a little bit of solder in the bottom, pick up the bezels, put a little flux on the bezel and drop them right onto the solder and they should adhere perfectly. Afterwards, I'll use a bezel pusher to lay in the edge and keep the stone in place. It's time to move on to our handle portion. The handle of Master Yi's sword is a very long spiraled handle. It's in two parts, but I'm gonna make my job easier by leaving it one part to start with, then I'll split it in half and make uh, a nice spacer in between. Reason being is I want that spiral to remain real fluid through both pieces, so we're gonna leave it this length. I'm gonna go diagonal on the sanding belt and get her carved up. Alright, those of you that are League of Legends fans know that Master Yi's sword glows green. To create that green, we've added a couple gemstones, but I also am going to paint the inside of our recess on the guard neon green. So we're closing in on Master Yi. The sword's fully assembled now. We're going to put the rings in. We've got to do some polishing. We'll go back over the paint. The handle has to be finished out. It's gold, so this ring will have to be golden as well. And then we'll be finished with the entire sword.
click here to subscribe or click here to watch more episodes. Thanks for watching Man at Arms Reforged. We need to know what you want the guys to build, so tell us in the comments below what weapons you want to see next.